Hi everyone, welcome. This is News in Hypnosis. My name is Isla Brock and I'm a certified hypnotherapist. And welcome to my show. Today we're gonna to be talking about my very special 12 week weight reduction, weight release, weight care, weight management, whatever you wanna call it, program. And I labeled it food sobriety. But before we start with that, I want to just, uh, something I read on social media recently, it makes sense and something that might resonate with you. I usually try to do something light and maybe I will, but this is something that I, I have. It says, don't speak negatively about yourself, even as a joke. Your body doesn't know the difference. Your mind doesn't know the difference. Words are energy and that's why we use words, they kind of, they, they cast spells because it's spelling, that's where a call came from. So you don't want to put that ideology into your own mind. Change the way you speak about yourself and you can change your life. What you're not changing, you're also choosing. And when I was in hypnotherapy college, what I walked in and somebody says, hey, Isla, how you doing? And I put, oh, better than I deserve. And she stopped me. She's like, oh, no, 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 that's not going to fly. I just thought that that's how you were supposed to, you know, re reply, if you will. So uh, I don't say that anymore unless I'm joking. Um, I, I also wanted to just give you a couple of words of wisdom uh, <clears throat> about your own privacy and boundaries of your privacy. Don't tell people more than they need to know. Protect your privacy. Um, another thing about addictions, comfort is the worst addiction and it will lead to unhappiness. Don't stay in comfort zone, stay out of comfort zone. And then avoid alcohol if you, if you can, at all costs if you can, because there's nothing worse than losing your senses and then acting like a fool. All in the name of alcohol, don't do it. Um, keep your standards high and don't settle for something because it's available. This is a hard one because we see an opportunity. And let's say you have a partner and you guys are together and, and this is something I've uh, explained with my own boyfriend and we work well together in this. So when there's an opportunity that comes up, and then I'll, I'll just end my first with this one. And I have told him, it's like, I am absolutely okay. Because oh, there can only be one chief, not a bunch of chiefs. Because then you start to butt heads when you have a lot of people trying to take over and take charge. So I said, you veto, you have veto power and I am going to be happy, physically and emotionally happy with whatever you decide. Listen, the consequences are his, not mine, okay? So if we have an opportunity that comes up and I really like it and he's not so sure about it, if we cannot agree, then the opportunity goes because the opportunity isn't nearly as important as the relationship. Just put that under your hat. So all that said, let's get into my 12 weeks to a healthier you. Slide one, it's called food sobriety. So what is food sobriety? How does it work? What does it do? And why the word sobriety? Because whenever we hear about sobriety, we think um, of alcohol or drugs. The reason I call it sobriety, because the word sobriety means to abstain from. And in the tenets of AA, Alcohols Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Anonymous, I can't talk. Anyway, um, it talks about the definition of an alcohol, a alcoholic, somebody who loses the ability to control their intake uh, of alcohol. So I took it to kind of another level. I just happened to be thinking about it a couple of years ago and I thought, huh. Um, Sobriety, I need to be in sobriety for food, like donuts. Okay, I fell off the wagon a couple times in the past year on the donut sobriety thing, but that's what I'm talking about, abstaining from things that are just not good for you. But then there's also the side where you abstain from things that you just can't control, and they could be very good for you. For example, I love cold, sweet watermelon. Oh, it's just like the best, right? But, um, I can eat the whole thing in like a day, day and a half. So it is uh, better for me to not have that in the house and, and not just, if I'm out and about and it's like, I, I'm not gonna overdo it in front of people, 
portion control or whatever. I don't know how to do that with watermelon or any fruit that's very sweet and tasty. Any foods that are really tasty. One of the things that I help you learn is that we need to learn how to eat when we're hungry, stop when we're satisfied. So eating and, and learning to stop. And then I'm going to teach a little bit about the difference between just hunger and then emotional eating. Physical eating, physically hungry, and emotional eating. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the what food sobriety is. And, and then I'm going to talk about, next slide, how it works and why do I do 12 weeks? There was an old fallacy years and years ago that said it takes three weeks to make a habit. And that's wrong. It takes three weeks to start the beginning of a consideration for a habit. So if you're trying to change something and become a habit and you're doing it for 21 days, you miss a day. Well, your subconscious mind's going to bank on you missing a day. So you got to go back to day one now and make that change all the way through. Subconscious mind's looking for you give an inch, it's going to take a mile, it's going to live on whatever it is. So that's why 12 weeks, 12 weeks, three months is when it's a, a really good solid. You see me for one, once a week, every week, and I have a little bit of homework for you to do every week. You do it and then you come back and I, I share accountability uh, uh, with you. And we go through what you've eaten, where your weight's at, your measurements, how it's been, what you're working on. And we're going to get into more of the detail. Next slide, please. Week one. We're actually going to start with a lot of information. I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. Just a lot of why do we need to eat three every three hours? Why do we not want to spike our insulin? I'm going to get to insulin a little bit later. We're going to talk about, um, I'm going to give you information on the truth and organization and motivation. Uh, but I'm going to give you a week, a journal. It's called uh, Emotional Eating Journal, which we're going to go through later. I'm going to give you just a folder full of information and charts and graphs and just everything you might need to start your program. I might even give you the program depending on if you bring one with you or if you want one of mine. And I use one of two to choose from and then we'll go through those later. But in order to change your way of life, also in a hypnotic state, we're going to work on changing your willingness to make a change. I used to go down every single row of the grocery store. That was my pattern years ago. That's just how I was taught or learned or thought it was supposed to be. Excuse me, I need water. Now I, I shop the parameters, the frozen, and then if I need something down a specific aisle, I'll go down the aisle and I'll get it and, and that's it. Okay, but changing yourself to a new self-image, uh, creating that self-image in a hypnotic state, so when you're in that hypnotic state and you're creating this wonderful new image of yourself, it's, it's helping you become that. So whatever's inside, you become it on the outside. So I work with you on the inside. And that inside starts to show itself on the outside. You're also wanting to help you understand this is a new way of life. I do not offer a diet program that you're going to be on for 12 weeks just so you can go back to the old way. That's not how I work. Okay, next slide, please. Being proud of self and start making a plan. Proud, I should have put yourself, huh? It will include water intake, um, meal identification, and some at some point, movement. Yeah, 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 I know. It's that E word. I'm with you on that one. Okay, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And that's like the easiest thing to do with the E word. And I try to be conscious of it and work it myself, but whatever. Um, I was on the wrong slide, I'm sorry. Be proud of yourself, start making a plan. It'll, like I said, water, meal identification, and at some point, movement, that E word. Okay, next slide. We're gonna talk about what's called the hunger scale. Physical hunger versus emotional eating. And you can go online on Google and you can Google hunger scale, pick one. The one I'm using, I don't even know where I got it from, but it's, it's one to 10. It's a scale of one to 10. One, meaning you're st so starved, you're weak and dizzy, irritable and moody. People don't want to be around you. 10 is filled to the point of feeling so full and sick, like that Thanksgiving dinner kind of feeling, you know? Ugh. 
you want to be somewhere closer to the middle ish is where you want to go so when you're going to eat you're going to identify where you are on the hunger scale am i super hungry how why did i wait 20 and i've done this wait 20 hours to eat sometimes i just get so busy and i'm drinking water i drink a lot of water a lot of club soda just club soda um probably not the healthiest thing but it's healthier than drinking soda and i like the effervescence but water and club soda is my drink of choice and uh, I'll, I'll just fill up on that and I'll just keep busy and busy and then it'll be like 15 or 20 or hours later. I'm like, why am I so irritable and shaky? Oh, I haven't eaten, that's why. So then, you know, that I don't wanna be there. I need to be able to eat a more regular pace style. And it happens, sometimes you do get busy, you got projects to do, things are happening and you just can't, you just can't stop to eat or you don't think about stopping to eat. So. I just if you have somebody that's going to be there with you in it great so identifying where you are and then physical hunger versus emotional hunger okay so emotional hunger eating <laughs> this is like um when you are emotionally hungry it's going to be right now it's going to you're going to go f towards things that are a certain type of food and typically it's sugar anything with sugar in it carbohydrates you're going to go for them you're going to get out the chips you're going to get out the candies you're going to get out the candied popcorn so the whatever the even crackers you're going to get this stuff out and it's usually late at night but or emotional eating when you're angry or upset or sad emotional eating comes on strong and you don't stop whereas physical hunger it comes on gradually you end up eating something that's more balanced, a specific, not, not a spe you're not going after all the carbs, but you're eating, like you have a protein, you have the green leafies, and you have like a, another side dish or something, a vegetable of some sort, but it's, it's balanced, and then you're just eating until you're satisfied and you're done, but it's a gradual thing, and it's like, this is dinner. Maybe you're making spaghetti for dinner, okay? And what our tendency is, because sp spaghetti is made so many different ways as there are people okay so everyone's got a little bit of a different recipe but when we go back for seconds after having a normal size plate we're not going back for seconds because we're hungry why are we going back because it tasted so good we're not we're ignoring our body saying hey enough now well that because typically we'll make more than what we're going to use that night. So what, what are the chances of you just saying, you know, I'm done for the now. If I get hungry later, I can have more later. Yeah, you can do that. And not only that, but isn't spaghetti better the next day anyway? Just like, you know, cold pizza. But we'll get to pizza in a bit. Uh, but just when you're feeling that, you know, so you've got your spaghetti, you've got your garlic bread, maybe you don't do bread, which I don't recommend doing bread, but if you do, it's one little piece. It's a little bit of pasta. You may even have uh, keto pastas now, organic pastas that are keto, uh, vegetable-based, if you will. They have um, zoodles, the zucchini noodles. And some people like, you know, like them. Put a lot more in there. You can do a lot of the zucchini noodles. Um, add a little carrot to it if you want. But then you've got your spaghetti sauce on top of it. you got a big old salad to eat with it. That should be plenty. And I would eat the salad first, drink some water, and then go to the, the meal. And just slowly chew your food. And um, uh, I had, my boyfriend had found a somebody online or somebody told him or a friend, I mean, it was kind of by way of some somewhere about chewing food and is the, the commentary is to chew your food, but then chew it a little more and chew it a little more and chew it a little more. And if you keep chewing your food just a little bit more and a little bit more, you're chewing it down, making it into what's called chyme, C-H-I-M-E, I think. Anyway, and as you digest it, you're chewing it and chewing it and chewing it like just over chewing. What we do is we chew a couple times and we inhale, right? But no, taking your time. You take your time, your body's digesting food as you're eating it and it gets to go through you a lot faster and you can eliminate a lot easier because you don't have these chunks of food floating around in your gut trying to break itself down because it's already going in broken down. So it just makes those enzymes in your stomach a lot easier to deal with. So chewing your food. Hey, I'm preaching to the choir here, folks. Okay, so taking your time, asking yourself, how hungry am I? Get the hunger scale out, figure out. And if you're at a two or three, that's 
uh, probably getting to where you should be actually eating food. But when you're at a five, four, five or so, that's a really good start preparing your food. Okay, next slide. We will be working with your limiting beliefs, or I'll be working with you on your limiting beliefs, which basically is something currently you believe in that you wish you didn't. And I did a whole episode on that a few weeks ago. So go check out my episode on limiting beliefs. I don't know which one it is, so you'll have to watch them all. <laughs> but what we'll do is we'll take that limiting belief that you have about yourself, or many that you have about yourself, and we'll just collapse them one by one by one and create just the opposite belief that you wish you did have. And it's such a beautiful thing. And we can just do that cognitively. If you want to call me and just explore what limiting beliefs are, I'll just help you right over the phone with one or two limiting beliefs just like that. Just give me a call. My phone number is on every single slide. So by all means, call me. Next slide. If you don't know the law of attraction, you will. <laughs> you will learn how to create goals and set them up and see them come to fruition. And how does the future self-image get what it desires. How does all that work? Because we're going to create something called a SMART goal. Next slide, please. SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, uh, reasonable or, or uh, realistic, and then a timetable. So when I go to set up a goal, this is what I use, is very specific goal. Be as specific as you can. And then I go to the T right away. When do I want this to happen? So when someone comes to me and they want to lose 50 pounds, great. When do you want to lose it by? And I'm looking at them like if it's, if it's seven, eight pounds a month, we're going to look at that many months if it's 50 pounds. So that's about what, six months or so. So I'll say, let's do seven months. God, if we achieve it early, they feel well proud of themselves, right? You just play a little game in your head. So we'll extend it one extra month than what they say, just so they know, hey, if I achieve it early, great. Is it measurable? Well, you're gonna watch the scale go down. Absolutely, very measurable. And then is it achievable? Well, six months, seven pounds, eight pounds a month is a pretty good measure, uh, achievable, realistic, realistic kind of way to lose weight because the, the the healthiest way is to lose one to two pounds. The first week you'll probably lose a lot more and then it'll taper off in your scale. Your graph will kind of like, it'll be like go down, maybe go up, go down, go up. But what's the trend here? The trend is it's going down. And then of course your timetable in your six months. So uh, really define what it is you want to achieve. Going to the next slide, please. Inner self, self-love, what exactly, huh? <laughs> you know, I, I come up with these corny little sayings here. With this program, you're not only using your amazing tool of hypnosis, we're also going to fill, uh, find out what we work, um, what works on the, what, what we're, we're, oh, I worded this wrong. You also will find out that we work on the inside, the outside, and then the outside of your, of you follows along. And it is, it's an amazing transformation. I did it and then COVID hit and you know, I undid it. So I'm in it with you people. All right, but it is, it has to start in the inside, it has to start with your heart, your, your mind, kind of like, I want this so much. And, and you go after it no matter what, no matter what. Social eating, we're gonna get into that in just a minute. Um, social eating, whenever you see food, next slide please whenever you see food you feel like you have to eat but if you're not hungry you don't have to eat you can just go without you know it's like have a just have a carrot you know kind of thing don't worry about having um eating just because there's food out it's hard sometimes if you're not hungry don't eat this slide is can i have a cheat day well yes and no and here's how i'm going to explain it you're on this way of life, this new way of life. This is your new journey. This is how you're going to live for the rest of your life because what you did before didn't work because it put you overweight. And if you're overweight and that's what it did before, then why would you think living that way is ever going to be different? So it's like the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. That's not how this works. You have to change. You have to decide that this is what I want to do. I am in food sobriety. I'm going to eat some really good foods. I'm just not going to eat the foods that got me to where I'm at. We were never meant to be this size, you know, in obesity. 
America, North America, has the highest rate of obesity than any other country in the world uh, just because of our rich Western diet. So we want to make sure that we are knowing that. Now, cheat. I can cheat. You know, you can eat a whole pizza. Go for it. Just don't eat the crust. Put all your toppings on it. Just don't eat the crust and no pineapple. I know I love pineapple on my pizza, but you can't have pineapple on a pizza. But you can eat everything else, all the toppings off the pizza and just leave the crust. So maybe somebody else likes the crust or you can just, you know, give it to your dog or throw it away or whatever. But that's, that's how you can cheat. Or if you just want to eat pizza, you can do that. But if you wanted to have that chocolate cake, one bite. That's all you need. It's just going to satisfy you for that few minutes anyway, till the next bite. So just have one bite, enjoy it, and be out and be done. But if you're and but my my high recommendation is no cheats for at least six months. But you can do what you want because no one's going to tell you what to do. Next slide, please. You also learn actual meal prepping and wait for it. <laughs> Are you moving? Yes, that E word. And really, all I'm going to ask you to do is one of a couple things. One, at this point, about six weeks in, I'm just going to ask you if you can take and walk, go out your front door and walk seven minutes one way, turn around and walk seven minutes back. That's it. That's all I want you to do. Or, and, whatever, after you've eaten a meal, just step in place 100 steps right after you eat a meal. 100 steps three times a day. So after any meal, step 100 times just in place you're done that's movement and that'll get you going and it helps digest and it does help you aid in some weight reduction now why don't I say weight loss I don't say weight loss because in the subconscious mind the word loss means we might find it so we say weight release weight reduction weight whatever um, the director here Austin Reed uh, I did a little weight loss session with him uh, a couple years ago he did lose a little bit of weight and then he went on and off on his own thing. So that was kind of cool to see how it worked with him to show him. Also, low carb, not keto. That's what I promote. Not You can go keto if you want or messy keto, which is basically just low carb. And your idea of healthy eating, keeping in mind something very important, the glycemic index is your insulin. And we're going to talk about this for a minute. Insulin, keeping your insulin steady all day long. Don't let it spike. Don't let it crash. Keeping it steady. If you can keep it steady at your normal levels, what are between, what are they, 85 to 110 or something? I don't know. But if you keep your insulin level, blood sugar, alcohol at uh, your insulin at a steady pace, with no, your energy increases. Your body starts using protein to create energy for its brain. Your brain is the one organ that uses the most energy because it keeps the function of everything else going. So if you, it's like, okay, so if you're denying it sugar, which is the easiest source of energy, let's stop denying it, let, deny it sugar and let it source, find its sources. You'll think more clearly, you'll sleep better, your energy will go up and it's an amazing tool. And someone like me who's naturally energetic, I'm off the charts. <laughs> it's like, whoa, boo boo, <laughs> for sure. Okay, and then the next one, fat burning and inner thermostat. We're going to do hypnotics on burning your fat, on the thermostat, your thyroid, your, not your thyroid, yeah, metabolism, that's the word. We're going to work on your metabolism and burning fat and just in, in an actual hypnosis kind of go through. And it's a real fun kind of theme I create. And I, whatever you're telling me, I kind of throw it in there. It's a, it is, it's a lot of fun. And uh, you get to use uh, 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 your imagination big time. And the next slide is confidence, motivation, and gratitude. Very important elements. And like, how can gratitude be a part of it? Because if your heart's in the right place, you're going to be in the right place. You're going to be in the place of just happiness. You're going to be in the place of comfort. You're going to be in the place of just knowing uh, where you're at. You're, you're gra grateful. You're appreciative confidence that you are doing this for yourself maybe for others too but it has to be for yourself motivation you're motivated with the confidence to do this for yourself and then our last slide final week is maintenance it's your maintenance week how creating and establishing new habits and new habit systems james clear wrote a book on habit systems or atomic habits highly recommend 
you read that book. It has a lot of good information about um, just the different elements of how to create habits using what you already do that's healthy and then adding other habits to it. Listen, this isn't just a regular diet program that you're going to do for uh, 12 weeks and just, you know, lose weight. Yeah, you'll lose it, but if you go back to the way you were eating, you're going to gain it. I'm I am like numero uno example of that gaining, you know, the, the weight gain on going back to the way I used to eat. And I'm on the trajectory backwards now to go back down. Now three pounds already. So uh, maybe I can do another one of these in about three months and uh, just come back and just kind of check in with you guys and see how I'm doing. That could be my accountability too. You can also follow me on Instagram at Isla B C H T. That's uh, Instagram uh, page for my Central Valley Hypnotherapy. I am my 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 founder of Central Valley Hypnotherapy. It's in Visalia, California, and uh, you can go to my website centralvalleyhypnotherapy.com and go to the services, and it'll show you food sobriety. If you click on that page, you're going to see all the elements that I talked about pretty predominantly uh, and maybe even a little more detail on weight loss, uh, weight reduction, weight care, management care on your weight, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it food sobriety. It just makes it simple. So that's my show this week, folks. I thank you so much for joining. And if you would like just a consult call, give me a call. We'll talk about some of the things that you're looking to do. I can do this weight program on Zoom with you. Absolutely. In person, if you are here in the Visalia or Central Valley area, give me a call, send me a text, uh, email me, or carry your pigeon if that's what you do. Um, I appreciate you joining me today. Take care, and I hope you learned something. Take care, and I'll see you next week.